Hi, this is Brian Tuckum coming to you from Whitman, Massachusetts. And I have a, a word from the Lord. Well, I feel like the Lord really laid this message uh, on my heart. And I feel like I need to share this with you. Because with all the stuff that's, you know, really going on in the world, I really feel like this is a message that everybody personally needs to hear. And I feel like that this is a message, and out of all the years that I've been preaching the Word, I don't think I ever preached a message that I am about to bring forth right now. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to the book of Matthew, the 26th chapter. Matthew, the 26th chapter beginning in verse 31, and this is what it says. On the way Jesus told them, Tonight all of you will desert me, for the scriptures say, God will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have been raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you to Galilee and meet you there. Peter declared, even if everyone else deserts you, I will never desert you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, Peter, this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you even knew me. No, Peter insisted, even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you and all the other disciples vowed the same. Let me ask you this. I'm going to ask you a very powerful question. If someone came up to you with a gun or even a knife, but all right, let's say you're in a situation and you're about to be beheaded. I know that I'm sounding a little graphic here, but I can't help it because this is stuff that is going on over in the Middle East. And stuff isn't, and there's a lot of things that are happening over in the Middle East that this is being taken place. We have radical Islamists killing Christians over in the Middle East, over in Iraq, where we're having trouble over there again, sad to say. But if you were approached, even if, even if it's Iraq or right here in the United States of, of America, right? In, I, I'm in Whitman, Massachusetts, the USA. But if anyone else is listening to this video in, in, in any other part of the world, let me ask you would you have the guts to say, I know God. If someone came up to you and said, I'm going to, um, came up to you with a gun and you were in a situation, okay, and someone said to you, do you know God? Are you willing to take the bullet for him? What would you do? You see, I mean, let me ask you uh, this, people. Are, are we too scared to 
admit that we know God? Are we too scared to represent Him? Are we too scared to admit that we have a relationship with Him? Are we too scared to admit that we are in love with Him? What would you do? You know, Peter said to Jesus, I will never deny you. But, but what happened? You see, there are some times that, you know, are we going to be like a Peter? Or are we going to uh, actually be firm and be strong and be bold and say that, yes, I know Jesus Christ. Yes, I have a relationship with him. In Matthew, the 26th chapter, verse uh, 69, and it said, Meanwhile, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came over and said to him, You were one of those with Jesus the Galilean. But Peter denied it in front of everyone. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Later on, by the gate, another servant girl noticed him and said to those standing around, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, Peter denied it this time with an oath. I don't even know the man, he said. A little later, some of the other bystanders came over to Peter and said, You must be one of them. We can tell by your Galilean accent. Peter swore, A curse on me if I'm lying. I don't know the man. And immediately the rooster crowed. Suddenly, Jesus' words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you even knew me. And he went away, weeping bitterly. You see, Peter knew Jesus. But, uh, the, but you see, the people were angry about Jesus. These people wanted Jesus killed. And yet, they recognized Peter as being one of the followers of Jesus. And they're like, you knew him, didn't you? And, and, and they were very angry ab about this. And, Pe and, and Peter took the easy way out, saying, no, I don't know him. And if someone asked you... Do you know Jesus? And if someone, you know, held, like I said, a gun up to you or, you know, held a knife up uh, to your throat and they ask you, do you know Jesus? Are you going to be bold or are you going to deny him? What are you going to to do? Are you going to have the courage to stand up and say, yes, I know God? Or are you going to turn and save your life? What are you going to do? Are you going to take the stand for Jesus Christ? Are you going to stand up for, for him? Or are you going to be a coward like Peter was and deny him? You see, there are a lot of people that have died because of, because they admitted that they know Jesus Christ. He, you know, the enemy, he will do whatever he can to silence the people that know Jesus Christ. I mean, take a look at, <clears throat> at what happened at Columbine many, uh, well, pro not too long ago. There was this girl by the name of Rachel Scott. She was just about ready to, 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 to graduate from high school. And the shooter uh, went up to her and asked her, Do you know the Lord? And she was bold enough in her faith to admit that she knew the Lord. And she died because the shooter shot her because she said, Yes, I know Christ. I have a relationship with him. 
You see, what would you do if you were in uh, Rachel Scott's shoes or the other people, you know, over in Iraq that, you, you know, are being killed because um, of their relationship with Jesus Christ? You see, there are people out there that are going to test you. There are people out there that are going, you know, that are going to be acting, you know, crazy and saying, do you know Jesus? You see, a, a, a lot of people in the world today, they want to take Jesus out. Are you hearing me? They want to take Jesus out, and we are seeing it, ladies and gentlemen, in America. I mean, they want to take, I mean, we're already seeing, I mean, prayer is being taken out of schools. They want to remove uh, the Ten Commandments. They want to remove God out of the Pledge of Allegiance. I mean, the world wants to remove God altogether. Why? Why? The, the, the other night I was doing Bible talk over on you now and, and and you know and there were so many people um, that you know they said that you know they want to go to hell and so forth why do you want to go to hell and and reject Jesus when Jesus has done so much for us you see let me tell you something folks the world needs to be the world needs to come back to God and I live in the United States of America and the United States of America was built upon godly principles America needs to come back to God amen you see we need politicians in our Congress and in our our governmental offices that know Jesus Christ and you know we need men and women that that say yes I know God it's time to come back to God it's time to bring God back you know, you, you know, with all these tragedies that are taking, you know, place, you know, these school shootings and, and you know, and these uh, killings, you know, we turn around and we ask ourselves, where's God? You see, folks, let me tell you something. It is not God's fault. It's not God's fault at all. Okay. We're the ones that are taking God out. But you know something, folks? We need to we need to bring God back in. Amen. We're the ones that need to bring God back in. If I mean, if we take God out, I mean, if we stay silent, then you know something. We're just by us being silent we are allowing the enemy to win and gain control but you see we need to stand up we need to stand up for God you see instead of um, saying that we don't know God we need to be the voice and say we we know God and God's plan is better and God's ways are higher than our ways are you he are you hearing what I'm saying to you people tonight God's ways are higher than our ways God knows best and yet what are we doing what are we doing we're removing him out of a lot of things they want to take away they want to take in God we trust off the US currency you see if we do not put our if we take God out of our country you know how in the world is God gonna be able to bless it I heard a guy speak 
at a men's conference that I went to. And and he made a real good valued valuable point. And uh, some of the people that I went with, you know, they they said, oh, he was being, you know, too harsh and everything. But he was speaking biblical truth. And I agreed with him 100%. And I still agree with him 100% to this day. Okay, I still do. Because, you know, he... He, he said, you know, how can we sing songs, you know, God bless America, God bless the USA, when we are taking God out? And I'm like, this is a very good point. You, you know, we want to, you see, we want to, um, you see, we're saying God bless them. I mean, the president is saying, you know, God bless America and and so forth. But yet, but yet they want to take these. Our government wants to take God out of our schools. I mean, they want to take prayer out of schools, and you know, they want to take. You know, I mean, like I said, they want to take God out. But how many of us are going to say we know God, and that, and we need to come back? to biblical principles. We need to come back to the faith that this country was built upon. You see, saints, we really need to pray for this country. We need to pray for our people, you know, that are overseas. I mean, I mean, we need to pray for you know, the missionaries that are trying to win souls for Jesus. I mean, they, I, I mean, they're on dangerous ground, pretty much. But, you know, like it says in Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, where it says, If my people are called by my name, humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and I will heal their land. You see, if we call, if we depend on the name of God, if we, if we just cry out to God, God will hear our prayer. Can God turn this nation around? Yes, he can, church. Yes, he can, men and women of God. It's time for us to, you know, stop sitting down, and it's time for us to start taking action. You see, we can, you see, we can talk about, you, you know, the problem, but, but you see, but you see, uh, men and women of God, if we don't take root of the problem, then you know what? The problem isn't going to get solved. Are you here? Are you hearing me tonight, people? Saints of God, are you hearing me tonight? If we do not take hold of the root of the problem, you see, let me tell you something, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. Saints of God, it's time to take action. It's time to take action. This country needs to come back to the cross. It needs to come back to God. It needs to come back to the biblical um, standards that this country was based upon. What are we going to do to bring it back? I hope that I gave you something to really think about. We need to start saying we believe in God. Alright, whatever you do, don't hide your faith. Show it forth. Let's be the light in a dark world. This nation, this country, is becoming dark. This world is becoming dark.
and no ma and men and women of God, wherever country that you're from, let your light shine. Let your country shine out for Jesus. Let's bring God back. Instead of sitting around and letting the enemy play his games, let's stand up. Stand up for Jesus. I, just like the hymn says, Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it shall not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall be renewed. Lift high his royal banner, it shall not suffer loss. Something like that. But we need to stand up. Stand up for Jesus. And be soldiers of the cross. We need to come back to the cross. I hope this gives you something to talk, think about. This is Brian Peckham coming to you from Lincoln, Massachusetts. And may the Lord richly bless you. God bless.